Hey guys, welcome back. All right, so this is going to be part two of the little, you know, abbreviated um, lap book. Okay, so if you haven't seen part one, um, I will see if I can manage to link it in the description here. So yeah, so this is part two. Um, and I did mention in the previous video that if you would like me to put together a bundle of all of the envelopes that you'll need to make this, that I'm happy to do that. And I would do that. I would say $10 and I'll do that, um, you know, shipped. Okay. So it'll be, I'll just say, I'll just say $12 altogether and, and that'll include shipping. Okay. And that'll include the elastic too. Cause I know that sometimes people have a hard time finding the elastic. So, um, that you'll need for the inserts. So I said that we would do the, um, the library pockets in this video. So I sort of did some trimming ahead of time just to save time. So basically what I'm talking about is doing the library pockets. I'm going to make a flap on those. And I did, I did link uh, Wendy's channel in the previous video. I'll do it again on this one to do her version of this. It's pretty much the same. It's just, she does the closure just a little bit different. So, um, so yeah, so let's do that. So basically what I've done, just taking a piece of scrapbooking paper, that's like cardstock weight. You want a little bit heavier paper and cut that to the width of the library pocket. Oh, and there's lots of, there's lots of templates to make library pockets online and you can easily make your own library pockets too. You know, I'm just lazy on them. Well, I'm not lazy, but I feel like making, you know, a whole bunch of library pockets. So it's just easier for me to buy them anyway. So <clears throat> these happen to be three and a half inches wide. And then I did the flat part four inches high. Okay. For both of them. So for the short one and the, and the taller one, and I am going to do the alternative version also, just so you know, it, it is, it's a tiny bit different, but, um, yeah, so this one is also three and a half by four. So I just cut those the same. And then I'm also going to do the little coin envelope and I'm going to show you an alternative to using an actual coin envelope in, in, um, that other part too. Okay. So then this, um, I want to cover this also. I, I don't know what I did with the other piece. Oh, hold on. I know I cut one that was the right size for that. Where'd it go? There it is. Okay. Yeah. So I like to make this just a teeny bit narrower than the envelope, just because I kind of like having the border of the coin envelope showing on the front. And I'm going to do some stitching on this too. So this is just a tiny little envelope, but, um, I don't know. I just think it's cute and kind of fun. So we're going to do that. And this is going to have a magnet closure. And then this one's going to have a little stringed closure. So let me just show you really quickly how I'm going to solve this. Um, if you don't have library pockets and you don't have coin envelopes. So basically, um, for the coin envelope, I took one of these smaller envelopes. Okay. One of these guys. And I cut it to the width of the coin envelope. Okay. So I think it was two and a quarter inches, something like that. So I cut a piece off that was two and a quarter inches uh, with the flap and stuff. And then I wound up cutting the flap off. Okay. So it's like. Yeah. So I think it is two and a quarter inches. So two and a quarter inches from one of the small envelopes. And then I cut the flap off and save these little scraps of, of craft paper because you can use those for, you know, making those stringed closures. Okay. So then we have something like this, right? So it's, um, actually, why did I do that? 
It's supposed to be closed on the bottom. <laughs> anyway, pretend this is closed on the bottom. Okay. So it would be like, like this one. All right. So whoops, I don't know what I'm doing anyway. So you just want to make a little thing like that with the, um, with the little small envelope. Okay. And, um, and then I'm just going to cover the front of it with a piece of scrapbook paper. And then I was thinking, you know, just to make it look pretty much, pretty much like the coin envelope, we can round these corners. Okay. So I don't know why I'm using this envelope that has that bottom cut off, but anyways, it's going to work. Okay. So that's the, that's the solution to the coin envelope issue. <laughs> okay. If you don't have one. Um, yeah, so we're, this is what we're going to be working with today on this stuff. Oh, and then for the other, for the, this, um, the library pockets, what I thought would be super easy is just to use one of those medium size envelopes. Okay. So this, that would be the. Yeah, the seven and a quarter by five and a quarter envelopes and basically just cut those in half. Okay. So that's what, that's what that is. It's just that medium size envelope cut in half vertically. Okay. And then I had to trim just a tiny bit off of this one to make it the same width as the library pocket. So it's three and a half inches wide. Okay. And, and then I just cut a piece of scrapbook paper that I can fold over a tiny bit of it onto the back. Okay. And, um, and so basically it's just covering this little flap and then we're going to make a closure for this. So I don't know. I just think this is, uh, this is, a, this is a good solution. And <clears throat> yeah, so those are just going to get glued on and a little bit of this is going to get folded over onto the back. Okay. Cause we're going to cover the backs of these two. So that little piece at the top isn't going to really uh, show that much. All right. So where that, okay. Okay. Focus Jessica. All right. So where's my coin envelope? There it is. Okay. I'm trying to keep these two like set separate. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do, um, I've cut this to three and a half by four. And that's going to be the nice, you know, the, the, the width of the coin envelope. So I'm going to fold that in half. Use my bone folder to crease it down really well. And then I'm going to glue this just to the, just to the bottom or just to the top of these, um, these fold over pieces on the back. So you know, it's not going to go, it's not going to go all the way down on there. It's going to be up a little bit, right? So that we can have a little bit more space inside for a tag. Okay. So I'm going to put the glue on the envelope or the pocket. Cause I think that makes it easier. And this doesn't have to be measured and all that. It, you know, you can eyeball it. It is important to get that fold really straight though, when you fold this over, um, so that the flap closes flush. Okay. So just glue that onto the, onto the back of the library pocket. You want to make sure it's straight. Okay. And then I'll do the same thing on this one. So if I was doing a series of journals and I'm making a whole bunch of these, um, I'm just going to get all my library pockets and I'm just going to do all of them all at once, you know, instead of just doing, you know, everything to each one individually, as I go through them, I'm going to do one process at a time. So this has writing on it. So I just kind of want to make sure that the writing is the right way up on the front. Okay. So I want to make sure that, you know, you can, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but it kind of does anyway. Okay. 
So that's the library pocket with the flap on it now. I'm not going to do that yet. <clears throat> okay. So I want to round these corners just because I like rounded corners on these. All right. And then doing the string closure, I have a bunch of just, uh, circles that are cut out of a heavier type of craft paper. Um, this craft paper from Hobby Lobby, I really like it. I say it all the time because it's really thick. It's real heavy. It's their, they have two different weights of craft, of craft paper. And this is the heavier one. It's great for like construction and stuff. So I've got some circles cut out in different size circles that I can use for string closures. And I just keep them all in this little, this little, you know, container. Some of these are made out of, you know, scrapbook paper and, you know, from different projects and stuff. Some are from, uh, this is like, uh, eco dyed paper that I did on watercolor paper. So you just want like a kind of a heavier weight paper. Otherwise, um, if you use a lighter weight paper, like the scrapbook paper is pretty thin, then you want to glue two together and make it a little bit heavier. So one thing that I do when I do string closures is I use a smaller piece of regular weight scrapbook paper and a heavier piece because it gives the string something to grab onto. It's, it, it's weird. Like, it just gives the string an extra little, like, like a lot, the string slips in between those two pieces usually. So anyway, but that's just how I do it. Cause I think it like helps the string kind of grab better anyway. Oh boy. Sometimes it's hard to explain stuff like this. Um, and then this, this is just like thinner, um, paper from paper bags that I like to use sometimes to, if I'm using, um, if I'm using, uh, uh, brads. Okay. I'm not using brads on this, but anyway, so then magnets, that's for the, that's for the, uh, coin envelope. And then I just have some of the real small eyelets. I think these are, I'm not sure. All right. So basically how I do this, I just, really eyeball this too. Um, where's my pencil? Here it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch a hole in the flap first, and I'm using the small side of the crocodile and I'm going to go up. Oh, I'd say quarter of an inch. You know, I don't know if you know this, but <laughs> you can adjust the, the, um, the depth on this thing, if you want to, like if you need to measure anyway, so that's actually about a half an inch and I'm eyeballing it right in the center. Okay. And punch a hole and do the same on this side or on this one. Okay. And then I'm going to use the crocodile to punch another hole in here. So I need to make sure that I don't go any deeper than this thing can punch and also to crimp, right? Um, so the flap just barely comes over, um, the opening of the pocket, right? So that's good because it gives us plenty of space. And it's kind of important that like when you're putting your flap on that, that you give it that much room, you know what I mean? Otherwise, like say that if the top of the pocket was up here and you needed to have your, you know, other hole down here you wouldn't be able to do it unless you use like a big bite or something. Um, you could probably poke the hole, but you couldn't do an eyelet version. So that's why, uh, Wendy's version is nice because she does it with an, with a, um, with a brad instead of an eyelet. I like to use the eyelet. So anyways, I'm just going to eyeball this and kind of come down and just mark about right there. It's maybe three quarters of an inch or so. Okay, because that's where I'm going to punch my second hole. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. 
out right there. So then I know that this will fit in there. So if you turn this with this part on the bottom with the, you know, that part on the, I need to open this up all the way. Hold on. Okay. You can see where the little hole punch thing comes down and that's where you want to punch your hole. Okay. So you should be able to watch that, that little metal part coming down and you want to just punch out your hole right where that is. Okay. Sometimes it's hard to line things up when you're trying to do it on camera and you can't really see it very well. So usually I'm holding it like this and it's a lot easier to see. Okay. So I punched that hole out and then the super, this is the super easy part. So then you just put an eyelet in that one in the, on the flap. Whoops. I need to change this. So the settings I'm using on the crocodile are, um, what is that? So it's C. four. Okay. C and four. So it's the smaller like pokey part. And then it's the smaller brass or copper color one on the bottom that actually it's, it's a different, sh it actually makes the bottom of the eyelet really, um, like rounded. Like it makes it really tiny, you know what I mean? And it's real flush. So you don't have like a big, like jaggedy thing on the back. You know, I like that. I like to use that setting because I think it's more like smooth, you know, anyways. <laughs> so then that one. Okay. And then I'm going to grab this is a lightweight, um, craft paper. So I'm going to punch a hole in that. So that's my small one. Hold on. Okay. Actually, just a second. I don't think I have any of the right size. So this is just the scrap from where I cut that pocket off. So I'm just going to cut a couple of these. So this is a lightweight craft paper. And then because I wanted a smaller one, I needed smaller um, circles. Okay. So I, I have a larger heavy craft paper circle and then a smaller lightweight craft paper circle. And the bottom one doesn't have to be craft paper. I just happen to have craft paper sitting there. Okay. This one was too big. Okay. So that's all I needed for both of these. So what I'll do then is I'll take another eyelet pop it and you punch a hole in the center of the circles, by the way, did I say that? Okay. So you pop, pop it through the large circle and then through the smaller circle. Okay. So it goes like that. And then kind of hold this so that it sort of cups like that and then pop that eyelet through there. And then I can chomp it. Okay, so that gives me the little clasp part. Let's do it again. So through the larger one first, and then the smaller one, and then through the pocket hole. That needs to be down. <laughs> okay, and then chomp it. Okay. So also I did on the journals that I had for sale, I did coffee dye these, um, because, um, Wendy did that in her tutorial and I just liked the way it looked. So if you want to coffee dye the, uh, envelope or the pockets, the, the library pockets first, that looks, that looks nice too. So then I'm also going to do some stitching on these. I'm just going to go right around the very edge of the whole pocket. Okay. And bef 
well, it's better to do the stitching before you put the string on. Um, so just pretend that I did that already. So I'm going to do stitching around the, the top part of the flap. Okay. I'm just going to go right around right there. Okay. Just those three sides. And then I turn it over and I do very close to the edge on the inside on the top of the inside. Okay. I do just a, a straight stitch real, real close on the edge. Okay. Like, let me see if you can see it. See what I mean? So I did just a, a straight stitch along the top of the pocket and then on the inside, I did right along that border. Okay. And I do that just because I like the way it looks, you know, it, it, it doesn't really serve much, uh, function, but you know, anyway, so that's what I do on the library pockets. And then I get this string. This is awesome cotton string that I've gotten from Carla and I'm going to cut a pretty long piece of it, like maybe about 12 inches. It's definitely more than you need. And, um, I'm going to double it. No, I'm not doubling it. I'm doubling it about that far up. Okay. So I've got about maybe a four inch tail or so. And then I'm just going to feed that up through. Hold on, you guys. Sorry. I'm having a hard time focusing at the moment. So I feed the end through and then I give myself a little tail. Okay. Like that. And then I'm going to tie this in a knot. I'm going to flip that around. Pull both, both ends through and then holding this kind of close to the edge of the pocket. I tighten that knot and then cut off the short tail. Okay. Cause you don't really want a double, um, string to wrap around this, uh, this paper part. You, a single string is better. So good weight string for this would be like embroidery floss. Or, um, I wouldn't use like wax cotton unless you're going to use, I mean, you can, it, it's just, I don't know. I just like using a thinner, like cotton twine or something, you know, um, you could even use like button thread that works really good. That comes on a spool. Sometimes if you get wooden spools of thread, you get button thread, um, or you can buy button thread, but that's a good weight of string to use too. Okay. So then that's just going to, you know, wrap around a couple times. It's nice when you do this kind of clasp to have a fair amount of distance between the edge there and, um, the paper, just, it just makes it easier when you're actually doing the, the closing. And then I like to do like some kind of little, little like decorative kind of piece on my string too. So I'm just taking this little tiny circle. Wait, I'm going to use the part that's kind of patterned. So two of those. And then I'm going to close this up just to make this shorter. I'm not going to do all of these envelopes on video. So then I want it to be about that long, right? So then I'm going to take my um, art glitter glue, put a little glue on there, and then set the string in the center, and then set this other one right on top, and then push it together. So it kind of traps that string inside those two pieces of paper, okay? So, I mean, you could ink stuff as you go. You could ink these little guys and ink stuff as you go, just whatever you want to do. But, but that's basically how it turns out. Sometimes when I do that little circle thing, I'll take, um, I'll take the paper and actually glue them together 
like that. Just glue two of them together. So it's kind of a heavy little, um, little piece of paper, you know, you could even do like three of them. And then I'll put an eyelet in that just cause I like the way it looks, you know, where's my thing? Here it is. Um, I'll put an eyelet right on the top uh, edge of it. And the paper didn't pop all the way out. Hold on. Because of the glue. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure you guys get the idea, but. Okay. Like that. Yikes. You ever notice that these lock sometimes? Like, I thought that my crocodile was broken because I was accidentally locking it all the time and I was having to, like, pull it apart. And then I realized that I was actually locking it on accident. So if your crocodile ever does that and you don't know why it's doing it, it's probably because it's locking. Anyway, so then I just put a little eyelet there. And then instead of gluing this onto the string, I actually tie another little knot through that little paper. I just, I just think it looks nice. Okay, so that's that one. That's the library pocket version with the actual library card. And then... For our alternate version, which is not using library cards, but actually using um, envelopes, I cut, I, I pre-cut some of this stuff too. Let me clean this up. No, oh, 26 minutes already. Okay. So this is an envelope cut in half. Okay. It's the medium size envelope. It's a... Um, seven and a quarter by five and a quarter. So I cut it in half and then I actually trimmed it just a tiny bit so that it was actually three and a half inches. So I trimmed like an eighth of an inch off of that one side where it was open already. Okay. And so this, I'm just going to make it so that it kind of looks like this, but it's not made with the library pocket. Right. So I'm just basically just doing the same thing. I'm just attaching a piece of paper on the front. Actually, I wanted to fold a little bit over. Okay. Just fold a little, like a, maybe a half an inch over. And then I'm going to glue that onto the back and onto the flap on the front. Right. So it's just going to basically be like a mock um, library pocket envelope. So this one is obviously taller than that, but this one is pretty close to the same, you know? So if you wanted to make this, if you wanted to make a shorter one, then what I would do is just cut off part of this envelope at the bottom, you know, just, just cut that off a little bit and then you'd have like a shorter one too. So does that, does that make sense? You guys, I hope so. I mean, it's not, it's not complicated. Right. And then you just do the, the string part exactly the same. And then when you do your stitching, you're going to actually close this envelope up, you know? So, yeah, so that's a good way to, I think, you know, improvise if you don't have library pockets. Okay. So then onto the little coin envelope. So the little coin envelope, I just cut a little piece of scrapbook paper that um, is slightly smaller than the coin envelope. So the coin envelope is like two and a half inches wide. So this is like two and a quarter inches wide and then just slightly shorter too. Okay. So I'm just going to glue that onto the front. I'm using the art glitter glue again. I think everybody is using this glue now, but with good reason, because it is pretty awesome. And I did, I am going to put all the links to all this stuff in the description on the video. So if you don't have art glitter glue, this is a good opportunity to find it easily. A couple different options too. I put links to these little bottles too in there. Okay. So glue that on. And then what I like to do is, cause I don't like that glue on there. Um, 
I'm going to cover that and I'm just going to use like some kind of other paper, you know, like something like that. Actually, no, I'm just going to use this. So I'm just going to cut a piece of this a little wider than that and a little shorter. I'm going to glue it on here and then I'm going to trim off the, um, the border. And I'm coming up just a little bit from the crease. Like I'm not putting this paper all the way down to the crease because I still want to be able to close my envelope real easily. So just be careful of that if you do this. And then I'm just going to trim trim off the excess. And I love these new uh, Tim Holtz scissors, by the way. Um, these are the haberdashery scissors, so they don't have the serrated edges. They're really nice for fussy cutting. Okay, so, I mean, that might seem pointless, but I just like having that, um, I like covering up that glue on there. Okay, so this is the sort of, sort of tricky part. So what we're making is this little envelope, okay? So it's got a magnet closure. So you could, you could do this with the little string closure too, but it's, um, you know, it's just a matter of whether or not you want to use a brad or an eyelet, um, to get down in there. It's kind of, you know, I guess you could punch the hole. You could punch the hole with this and then you could get, you could get this down in there, but I want to do this with a magnet just because that's what I did in the originals. So I also included links to these magnets in the description. Cause I know somebody will ask, where'd you get those magnets? Um, so these are five millimeters by one millimeter. Okay. And if anybody has seen my little method of doing magnets, um, this is how I do it. So I take one off of the stack and I just lay it down the way it comes off the stack with that part up. Okay. And then I take off another one, the next one, and I lay it. Come on. These are really strong little magnets, by the way. And then I lay this one opposite with the bottom up on my desk. So they're far enough away from each other that they don't like stick together again. And then this is uh, like paper medical tape. Okay. So I'm just going to tear off a little piece of this paper medical tape. And grab that magnet with it. Okay. I got glue stuck on me. Okay. And then I'm going to place this so that the magnet is pretty much right in the center. Okay. I want it basically centered and not too close to the edge and then just really press down that paper tape and it almost becomes like invisible you know and it's really thin that's the thing is i like to use tape that's really thin so that the magnet still has good stickability okay so then i take another piece of that little paper tape and i pick up the other magnet with the opposite side up so that these will actually attract to each other. And then I stick it on there with the sticky side of the tape up. Okay. So the magnets are now stuck together and then I close the envelope, stick it down, push on it and then lift that up. And the other magnet is stuck on that side now. Okay. And then this is where, you know, I like to cover, I like to cover that tape because over time it does start to, um, come up. It will start to come up because it's not like permanent tape. Right? So then I'm just using the Elmer's all purpose glue 
and I'm using a really thin like craft color paper to just glue over the top. Sometimes it's hard to get that to lay flat. So you just got to work it, work it. <laughs> okay. And then, and then I'm going to cover this one too. If it comes out, if it comes up over the edge, you can just trim it off. Wipe my fingers, wipe the dust. I love doing this kind of stuff, this little like tedious kind of stuff. It gets hard. It's hard when you're doing like 16 journals though, just saying. Anyway, so there, and, and since both of those, you know, layers of paper are relatively thin, the magnet still has good strength, you know? So you could put like a little, um, you could put like a little tiny tab on there or something, or, um, I think on some of these, I actually glued like a little piece of fabric. To, to act as a little tab. Okay. And since it's kind of difficult to put things in a coin envelope, especially if it's, you know, glued down onto something, it's kind of hard to get things out of there. So me being like obsessive compulsive, I will punch a very small little notch out of the top of that. And I'm using this little punch and it, enables me to just cut that little half um, circle and then I'm actually going to trim off that little edge and then turn her over and trim off that little notch okay so there and then we could put something in there that has like a tab on the top or a string or something so you could pull out whatever it is that you put in there okay and so then on our alternate version um it's basically the same thing oh and then i do the stitching around the bottom of these i don't i didn't stitch around the flap on the top part but i did do some uh, decorative just you know straight stitch along those three sides so on this you would want to do that um you know because one side is open right it should be just one side <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. I think I must have cut the bottom off too. I don't know. Anyway, I wasn't thinking straight. Okay, so this is going to get glued on to the front. Oh, wait, I'll use that. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the magnet and everything. And it should it should turn out pretty much the same. Uh, whoops. <laughs> Okay. This one I cut to the same size as the as the envelope. I didn't cut it smaller like I did on the coin envelope. Okay. So just like that. And then, you know, do your magnet and cut your actually it's easier to cut the notch out of this one. Um with it open like that. So you can actually see. cut my little notch now okay and then do your magnet so that's how you would do the kind of alternative to um, a coin envelope all right okay so we did that now what are we gonna do in the next video I did put links to magnets in the description um, these little eyelets, I actually do get them at Hobby Lobby. They're the, um, the paper studio brand. And I think they're regular price nine 99. Um, but you know, if they have paper studio stuff, like they do every two weeks, half price, you know, you could, you could get them there, go on their website though, and check for them on there because you could buy as many as you want at that, at that price on the website. In the store, they only usually have one or two of them on the shelf. So if you're like me and you like to just stock up on stuff, go buy them on the website. I mean, you'll pay for shipping, but the shipping isn't, isn't, you know, anyway, it's still cheaper. Okay. So in the next video, I will finish this one and we did those. So we've got those little pockets done. In the next video, I'm just going to be like, um, 
covering some of this stuff with paper and doing some collage and things like that on the cover and on some of these uh some of these little pockets too okay so that's what's coming next and then we'll prep this little envelope too and i'll show you how i used it in the journal okay so there we go if you have any questions um you can leave them in the comments i'm going to try to check the comments as often as i can on this uh tutorial series and let me know what you think and how you're feeling about it and all that so, all right. So that's what, that's what we're doing. I love you guys. Talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye for now. What happened? <laughs> I don't know where it went. Just a minute.